Welcome back to Floss Tube. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed your time here so far. I'm so happy to have you back again. I have a ton of new subscribers, so thank you all and welcome. If you do like what you see, definitely hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos. I hope to do this every two weeks or so, so hopefully you'll be seeing me fairly regularly. And uh, let's see, today is actually Veterans Day. I don't know how many of you are in the U.S., but those of you who are, you know that we're honoring uh, those who have served in the, the armed forces today. Um, it's especially near and dear to my heart. Both of my parents served in the Army. Um, my mother was actually part of the U.S. Women's Army Corps, uh, one of the first um, organizations that allowed women to serve uh, in the military. And uh, so that's a, a pretty special thing in our family. My dad was in the military for 20 plus years or so. Um, so it's definitely something that um, is near and dear to my heart. So for any of you out there who have served, I thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice. Uh, those of us who are here doing things like this today couldn't be doing it without all of you um, having you know made those, those uh, sacrifices for us, for our freedoms. So thank you so much. Um, let's see what's happened in the last couple of weeks. Well, most of my time, most of my stitching time has been spent on Stiach. So you may remember from the last video, I talked about Stiach a lot. I uh, had the t-shirt, had the whole branding thing going on. Uh, so we're winding down now, but we've still got a couple of weeks before it's all completely done. Uh, last week, we actually, this past week, we actually submitted our team collaborative projects. Um, so the, the way that teams work, it's all completely for fun. Uh, there's a championship of sorts, a world championship, but really, it's all for bragging rights. I think there are some prizes and things like that, but it's not as if you get like a 10 grand prize or anything like that. It's mostly just people coming together in groups, making new friends and kind of forming this community and that sort of thing. But one of the many, many challenges that we did over the last 12 weeks or so was to create a team collaborative project. We had to have at least five teammates work on this project and we could either all stitch one piece that we mailed around uh, to everybody or uh, we could have each person work on their own small piece and uh, you know kind of all bring it together and stitch it together into one piece. So since our team is is worldwide. Uh, we have Rachel Ray Craft um, from Ireland. We have Stone Cold Coffee Crafts from Germany, uh, as well as um, Pippa from Tasmania, uh, and then several of us here in the States as well. So we were all over the place. We decided it'd be far easier if everybody worked on their own individual piece. And then we, uh, everybody mailed their stuff to me and I put it together here at the end. So, uh, unfortunately, um, Stone Cold Coffee Crafts Heike's piece did not make it. <laughs> um, I'm hoping it's still in the mail somewhere, but somehow it, it didn't, it had, it didn't arrive in time. So it isn't, um, it isn't stitched onto our larger piece. I'm hoping it will arrive soon and I can put that together, maybe have that finished piece to show you next time I do a floss tube. Uh, but in the meantime, here's what we have so far. So you may remember uh, last time I had this, you know, the Sips and Stitches logo. Um, the interesting thing is, I don't know if you all noticed this. It took us 12 weeks to notice this. Um, we spelled stitches wrong in our team logo. Uh, and that's not even just on this stitch. Uh, that's also on our team logo that we've been using all over Facebook for 12 weeks. So we <laughs> what we decided to do um, is kind of to go along with our, our whole Sips and Stitches theme, um, you know, because we like to sip uh, and, and you'll see there's some uh, there's some fun adult beverages here. We got some beer. We've got a whiskey sour from Rachel Ray Craft. Uh, this is my mojito that you saw before. Um, and I believe that uh, Heike made a um, what was it? It was a Cosmo or a martini, um, you know, so so most of us like to sip, uh, you know, adult beverages. Uh, Carrie, she made this this super cute coffee, uh, which honestly, I couldn't live without coffee either. So, you know, it's kind of all all together there. But uh, what we decided to say was that, you know, we have no teetotalers uh, in sips and stitches. In fact, we never total our teas. So we don't have enough teas and stitches. <laughs> So, oh, and then at the bottom here, Rachel did this super cute beaded cross stitch. I can't remember if I showed you that last time, um, but that is our team mascot because we had to frog so much during Stiach. So this is what we have for our team, our team collaborative project so far. Hopefully we'll be able to finish it soon, just waiting on the mail to, uh, to deliver from Germany. So we'll see how that goes. So um, that's the biggest thing uh, that I finished 
in the last couple of weeks, I spent a lot of time, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but there were a lot of stitches in that misspelled stitches. So that's what I spent a lot of my time on. Um, also, the actual stiatch itself uh, has been a journey, let's say. <laughs> I had never in my life done blends. I had never in my life done quarter stitches. Uh, so many things that I had not done in my life, um, I did with stiatch this year. Um, and I actually made a big uh, a post yesterday because I finally, finally yesterday, actually finished the faces. Um, I put, I finally got all of the stitching done on their, the backgrounds of their faces, and I got all the back stitching done around the outside, and I got all the back stitching done to make their actual faces to have the eyes and the lips and, and oh my gosh, if I had known if I had known ahead of time that there was going to be this kind of detail work, uh, I'm not sure that I would have, uh, you know, chipped all in. I'm not sure that I would have had dedicated myself to it. But since I signed up, uh, since I am not a quitter, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and because I'm a team captain and I feel like it's, it's really important. If I'm asking my team to finish, I really need to finish and I really need to push through. So this weekend, because it was a three day weekend, I had the opportunity to finally get done. So without further ado, I still have my final, final finish to do, but I have the golden girls. I have my ladies and this is what they look like. Can you see that? I'm going to get real close. So that is hours and hours and hours and hours. Actually, the, the back stitching for the faces didn't take as long as I thought it would. I thought it would be like hours and hours because it took so long to get through these blends, to get the faces filled in, to get the hair filled in. I really thought that doing the tiny stitches and all the back stitching on the faces to make the lines and stuff, I thought that was going to take forever. But realistically I knocked it out in maybe four hours like basically an hour a lady so um, as you can see I'm working on my border uh, I'm not going to tell you yet what I'm going to put as my actual finish um, but this is this is some of that Threadworks thread uh, that I showed you last time so it's a really gorgeous variegated um, like purple to green to blue so it's got some teal um, you know, it picks up some of these these bluer colors uh, in the the main stiatch that I love so much. A lot of the finishes that were provided to us went with all these pinks, um, and I don't mind the pinks, but I didn't want a lot of pink all over mine. So I got this nice little border. I'm gonna do some lettering up in here, and uh, so definitely by the time you see floss to begin, these will be done. Uh, these are due this coming Friday the fifteenth. So. Um, hopefully I'll finish today. I don't know if I'll actually finish today. I got, I have some other non cross stitch things I want to do today. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Oh, and, uh, I have to show you the back. Look how this turns out <laughs> with the eyes. It looks so crazy. It's like some kind of a uh, scary, um, uh, ransom letter or something like that. <laughs> but I'm surprised at how neat the back looks, even for all of my, frustration and you know refusal to continue pin stitching and stuff like that because I, I finally got to the point where it's like you know what I'm just gonna carry this thread because I'm tired I'm tired I don't want to switch so yeah but uh and I was telling the group yesterday um this has been one of the most difficult craft projects one of the most difficult cross stitch projects certainly that I have ever done but the sense of accomplishment that has come with this is massive you cannot I don't know if you can understand um, because I have never done something this detailed I've never stuck with it um, I do have a tendency when things get too complicated or too boring I kind of set them aside I didn't let myself do that this time so I'm kind of proud of myself um, and, and I feel pretty accomplished so that's the big news this time um, and then the only other thing I've really worked on because all of my time and energy has been on stiatch um, is I have I think I've done a couple more rounds on this little stitch along from nerd stitch along on Facebook I can't remember how far I was last time we talked um, I really don't think I've done but maybe one or two more rounds on this guy but I should be finishing that up soon uh, as soon as I finish finish it's the finish stitch along Siach along. Um, I think my next goal is going to be to finish this little guy because I think I'm on day 
15 or 16 and there were only 23 days so I'll probably finish up this guy this will be pretty quick I think I'll work on the late side needle craft um, rose Macintosh rose SAL and that was the small Macintosh rose SAL that was the free one that they offered I think I'll probably finish that one out too so this I should have at least these two finishes next time we talk um, and then um, let's talk what I'm gonna work on after that so once I get those two, the biggest thing coming up, I think, maybe not the biggest, but probably one of the things I'm most ready for coming up is the Stitchonomy Snowflake Stitch Along. Um, if you have not heard of that yet, I believe it's going to be released this coming Friday the 15th. Um, or if you sign up now, you can go ahead and get the fabric requirements and the floss requirements and that kind of stuff. Uh, that one seems like it's going to be really cute and fun. I actually have my fabric picked out. I didn't think I had fabric and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to buy more fabric because why, why wouldn't you buy more fabric, right? Um, but it turns out, and I think I may have mentioned this, um, when I did my stash flash last time, I came across this gorgeous opal blue fabric. Um, and this is the Be More Pacific Misty, um, Let's see, Mystic Fabrics, yeah. Um, so this is for Be More Pacific in Opal. Um, I totally forgotten I had bought this. I think it's gonna be plenty big enough for that SAL. And this is a 32 count Lugana. So I'm really excited to work with that. It's gonna be really, really pretty. I think she's using, um, I'm not sure who what the woman's name is who runs Stitch On Me. I think she's using something that's a little bit more like an, uh, a baby blue robin's egg blue kind of color um, but I think this is gonna be gorgeous I just need to I need to get the flosses and do a floss toss just to make sure that nothing's gonna just disappear on this but I think this will be all right a lot of folks are using a really dark uh, fabric so I think we'll be totally fine with that so uh, I don't have much of a stash flash actually let me go back to things I'm getting ready to work on so um, there's the snowflake SAL there is the cutting cross stitch Letters from Hogwarts, Stitch Your Own Adventure. I believe I mentioned that last time. So I'll be actually getting that graded up and um, hopefully start getting the frame worked on in the next couple of weeks as well. Not sure if I'll do that before I start the Stitch On Me snowflakes or not. We'll see. Uh, just kind of depends on how I feel really because that's a huge project. It's a huge undertaking. So I really kind of have to get in that motivated organizational space. But you know, it's coming. I have until January to get all of that done, so I'm not a terrible rush. Um, by the way, I'm going to put as many of these links as I can remember in the description down at the bottom so that if you don't know what I'm talking about or where to find it, um, I'll, I'll try to link you so that you can go directly to it. So that's the Snowflake SAL, Soya, and then there's another one getting ready to start, another stitch along getting ready to start, and I haven't decided whether I want to do it or not. A lot of folks are really into like creepy halloween -y stuff all year long. Um, I'm not necessarily a creepy stuff kind of person, not in, super into creepy stuff and horror movies and that kind of stuff, but Witchy Stitcher is getting ready to start a new SAL called Chopping Mall. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about it. I'm considering doing it, but I might wait until I start seeing folks do the first pattern um, just because I think it might be a lot of like horror movie villains or something um, sort of displayed in a chopping mall, shopping mall sort of situation. Um, I think the frame is going to be uh, a mall kind of like a storefront situation. So I kind of want to see what that's going to be before I commit to it. But um, so to combine my future projects with my stash flash, um, the latest thing that I got, because I finally got a chance to join um, Mystic Hand Dyed Fabrics Fabric of the Month. Uh, this is something she doesn't open up very often. This is the first time since I've been in the group that she has opened it up. Um, and I've probably been in the group two or three months. Um, I think she will open it up again in January. So I'll post a link if I can remember to her Facebook group. You do have to request to join so you, she may not approve you right away. I think the group's gotten pretty big. But uh, I think she's going to do her fabric of the month again in January. So you can check that out. Uh, pardon the noise. Uh, so my first fabric of the month, um, she calls this color Witch's Brew. So let me just show you this. So it's a little green, it's a little orange, it's sort of, let me back up a little bit. 
So it's kind of a mixture of colors. Um, it's kind of black, gray, you know, sort of Halloween-y colors. That's what you would expect for, you know, October, November kind of time. So, um, and I think Chopping Mall is designed to be done on a darker kind of background. Um, you don't want anything too neutral is my understanding. Um, if you go too light, then some of the colors might blend into the background. So I'm kind of thinking if I decide to do Chopping Mall, assuming this piece is large enough, um, I think this will be what I use. So that's, again, that's Mystic hand dyed. You're going to see a lot of Misty's fabrics because I am so in love with her colors and um, the fabrics are really soft. Um, I've only worked with the one piece so far, but I'm super excited. And this is a piece of uh, 32 count Lugana. So I'm kind of, I'm limiting myself when I purchase from Misty mostly to getting um, Lugana and even weaves because um, Ada is a relatively easy for me to come by as far as like white and off white kind of Ada. Um, so because I can get that myself and I can dye things myself, I'm kind of only buying from Misty what I can't do myself. Uh, and granted, I am, I'm not skilled enough to get the kind of variegation and modeling and stuff that she gets. Um, she definitely has, um, she definitely has a very professional style that I love, but, uh, I am able to dye some of my own Ada fabric. So rather than, than buying a whole bunch of stuff from her, um, that I could do myself. I'm I'm sticking with Lugana's and stuff because I can't I can't figure out where to buy even weave um, reliably right now. I have found it uh, sometimes at Michaels, but trying to find yardage of cross stitch fabrics has been difficult so far. So um, yeah, so most of my purchases from Misty, my fabric of the month is uh, is Lugana, um, and that's because I can't get even weave very easily. So since, um, since I love her fabrics, uh, I will get her fabrics in Lugana because I can't do that myself anyway. So, um, I can kind of justify the cost that way. <laughs> so, uh, so those are the upcoming stitches. Uh, if you, if you're doing a stitch along that you think is really awesome, or you found a really, really awesome pattern that you would like to share, uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to see what else everybody else is working on. I know that, I think it's Frosted Pumpkin is doing a Nutcracker um, themed SAL. I believe Rachel Raycraft is working on getting ready to work on that one. Um, I know that there's a whole bunch flying around right now. So if you have a really cool one that I haven't mentioned, let me know because I would love to. There's no such thing as too many SALs. There just isn't. <laughs> so I would love to know about more. So um, I think that is... Yeah, I don't really have anything else for my stash flask this time because um, I actually had been pretty good until this week about buying tons and tons of stuff. Um, I haven't gotten any new floss yet, um, though I have been using that Threadworks floss, which is gorgeous. It's so soft, too. And the color, I love the way the colors change. It's really, really gorgeous. I can't wait to get more of that. Um, but I haven't bought any new floss. I've only gotten the one piece of Misty fabric. I haven't bought any other stashy stuff. Um, and... Um, yeah, so that's about it for that. Um, so I figured since I have a little bit less to talk to this, talk about this time compared to last time, I thought that I might talk about my own hand dyeing. So, um, I think I mentioned last time that I had gotten into some ice dyeing. I do plan on doing uh, a bunch more. I just haven't gotten to it. Just been too much stitching that had to get done with these deadlines and stuff like that. So, I had hoped to do some dyeing this weekend, but just haven't gotten to it. Uh, and I still need to actually finish off these pieces that I've worked on. So let me get to it. So ice dyeing is this really fun technique. I don't know if, if you all are familiar with it, but it's this really fun technique where you basically, you, uh, you pre-treat your fabric and it doesn't have to be Ada. It can be any kind of fabric. Um, cotton fabric preferably in my opinion but really whatever you whatever dyeable fabric you want to use um you pre-treat your fabric and then you basically arrange it on uh, some kind of rack that will allow fluid liquid to drip through and you set up your fabric in whatever kind of pattern it doesn't have to be a pattern you can just kind of bunch it up you can put it in swirls you can do whatever um and then you just load it up with ice tons and tons of ice, as much ice as you can. If you have teeny tiny cubes, that's going to give you a much different appearance than if you have great big chunks of ice. So what I would love, I wish I had 
Um, my mom, it's so funny, my mom used to call this ice snowman poop. I don't know if you have it in your area. I, it might be a southern thing, but basically the ice comes out in these like tiny little cylinders and it breaks off. It looks like snowman poop. But anyway, that's what my mom used to call it. So I would love to get access to that kind of ice to use for this because it would be so interesting to see how the patterns work. But anyway, so you put tons and tons of ice, whatever kind of ice you have on hand, you want it completely covered all of the fabric covered in ice. And then you're gonna take a dry um, powdered dye, fabric dye, and you're gonna sprinkle it over the top of that ice. And as the ice melts, it mixes with the dye and it, it dyes the fabric underneath and you get all these different uh, variations in tone because the, the dye will be thicker or thinner depending on how much ice was under it and what other colors mixed with it. It's really cool. There's no way to control the process, which is one of the reasons I love it so much. I am a control freak. I'm a perfectionist. Uh, so projects like this are really great for me because I cannot control it. That is the whole point. Uh, it's one of the reasons I like doing uh, paint pours as well, because the whole point is that you are unable to control it. You can change the circumstances. You can do different things to get different effects and stuff like that, but you can't, you can't make it perfect in the way that you can a cross stitch, in the way that you can a drawing, you know, that kind of stuff. There's no worry about that because whatever you end up with is going to be awesome. So... Anyway, so if you want more information on ice dyeing, there's lots and lots of YouTubers out there. Um, and I will say, you know, just kind of check out ice dyeing. Um, I've watched a couple of tutorials um, on ice dyeing, a couple of different videos. Um, I didn't like them enough that I would specifically link you to them um, just because I think they were the ones that I've seen could be more informative and we're a little bit long-winded. So if I find one that I think is really awesome, or if I do one myself, I will certainly share that with you. Um, but here are some results that I have had. So these are, I'm going to show you my least favorite ones first, and then we'll get to the nicer ones. So um, this is, and some of these I've used RIT powdered dye, and some of these I've used um, like a tie-dye kit, a tulip tie-dye kit. Now, um, I do have some tips, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, um, what kinds of dyes you should look for for what kinds of fabrics. So this is black and red with a little bit of yellow. Um, not sure that I love this. I mean, it's interesting, um, but definitely you, you need some kind of, I don't know, autumn or death and gore kind of pattern for that. Um, I was trying to get an autumn, like an um, autumnal uh, kind of pattern going and uh, and I need, these were some of the very first pieces I did uh, and I need some more practice with mixing the colors. I think part of the issue is um, it's very easy to go too heavy um, and to put too many colors. I think probably one of your better bets is to start with just one color, maybe two colors. Um, and, and to see how that works for you and then add from there. I got super excited and was like, let me throw all the colors on there. All the colors, all the colors. Cause and she's, uh, you know, I like color. So I was trying to get rainbow from the start and it's, uh, that's difficult to get <laughs> right off the bat. So, um, this is actually, uh, this is one of my more favorite pieces. I'm trying to sew these off. So they look real frayed and everything. Cause I need to, to, um, to overstitch them on the edges and the sewing machine I had did not have the ability to change the length and the width of the stitches. So I had to get a new sewing machine and I just haven't gotten into it. But this one looks really cool, I think. So this is kind of purple and blue and green. I can't wait to find something to do with that. And then this one. Um, so this one I actually you can kind of see this one I, I folded sort of accordion style before I put the die on top. So you can almost see that tie dye quality of it. And this is the fun thing. So you can kind of control the pattern a little bit if you want to, or like these other pieces, you can just completely crumple it up and let it do whatever it's going to do. Um, this one, I think I did sort of an accordion, but sideways or a spiral. So that's kind of interesting. And these definitely do have a tie-dye quality to them. And I think that's because of how much dye I used. I don't think you need to do as much dye as I did. There's also, I've learned, um, a significant difference between ice dyeing with a dry powder 
uh, dye versus wet dyeing um, or your more traditional dyeing. I think they call it like immersion and um, limited immersion or something like that. I can't remember the specifics. Um, if I do at some later point, I can certainly discuss that. And if that's something you'd be interested in, I can certainly, you know, at some point make a video about, you know, more of the lingo of dyeing. Um, but you get a much different effect if you use liquid dyes versus um, doing something like ice dyeing where there's a very limited amount of liquid and the dye is much more concentrated. I think that's one of the reasons that Misty's fabrics are so, the colors blend together a little bit more. There's not as many um, very, con you know, there's not a lot of contrast or at least not those hard edges. Um, mine certainly has a lot more specific hard edges between the colors. This is one of my more favorite pieces. The only bad thing is this one, it's a larger piece. I want to say that this is maybe 15 by 18. So either I need to do a great big piece to take advantage of all that color, or I need to figure out how to put smaller pieces strategically on this fabric to catch some of those. Because you could potentially, I mean, think about it. You could have a great big pattern that takes advantage of the whole um, layout there, or you could kind of, you know, like cropping a picture, you could just focus in on this area and do a small pattern in that area. So that's one of the fun things about this. You just don't know what you're going to get until you finish. So that one's pretty cool. You can tell I love purple. Purple is one of my favorite colors. Purple is my favorite color. <laughs> it's not even one of, it is my favorite color. And then blues and greens. Um, I'm definitely a cool color person. That's just, that's my bag. So this is actually, this red is a little bit better. I think, I think I just did, looks like there's a little bit of yellow or orange down here, but I think this is just red and black. So, um, and it was fun rinsing these out in the sink because when you use red dye, it looks like you murdered somebody in your sink. It's really fun <laughs> or not fun, depending on how you look at these things. <laughs> Um, this one is really interesting. This is another one of those that I tried to get a sort of autumnal feel. Um, and I didn't think I liked it at first, but the more I look at it, the more I like it. It's got some interesting purples and stuff going on here. Um, so again, if you kind of quarter this out and you do some small patterns, like this piece right here, this top quadrant here, that could be a really gorgeous, like fiery sunset kind of background to something. And this is almost a galaxy with the a bright orange in the center there. Yeah, so these are some fun pieces if you don't, if you look at them by piece instead of as a whole. Um, this one's really nice. This is one of my favorites too. Because the colors are really vibrant. I love that. So um, I was trying to decide I feel like I had thought of a pattern I wanted to use for a couple of these and now I've forgotten what those patterns were. That's something else I'm going to be working on going forward is um, sort of a way to store and organize my pattern ideas and project ideas and that kind of stuff so I don't lose those. Now this one definitely looks like two different dye jobs, doesn't it? So we almost have flowers on this side, purple flowers, and then this is much more just like, I don't know, blue and green kind of situation. That's interesting how that stuff turns out. Most of these, I couldn't tell you how I laid them out. Um, there's a couple that I can just because you can see the line. So I know that that was like an accordion fold kind of situation. Um, so, And the fun thing about Ada, Ada actually takes up the dye a lot more than some other fabrics. So you can get some really intense colors depending on what kind of dye you use. And I'll show you the difference because I also, I also dyed um, some basic cotton fabric. So, um, I don't think this is, this is not linen. I know it's 100% cotton, but I'm not sure what it is besides being 100% cotton. So, um, I dyed a couple of pieces of just plain cotton cloth, excuse me, using the exact same methods. And you can tell that this is a lot more muted. And some of that I'm sure is because there was more fabric overall. But I think also this type of cotton fabric doesn't take the dye. It doesn't hold on to it as well. So 
it's kind of really muted, uh, but I think it's pretty. It's kind of a water watercolor ink blot situation. I'm planning on using these um, these cottons that I did for maybe project bags or something like that. Um, I do like making zipper bags and things like that, and I want to get back into that, especially now that I have the fancy schmancy sewing machine, or at least fancier fancier than it used to be than the other one that I had, um, so I can maybe make some more interesting projects. So this is see if I can get this completely in the, or at least more in the shot. This has a lot of purple and pink in it. So it's a really interesting color. I also dyed a t-shirt uh, when I dyed these and I was going to wear it for this video and then I decided not to. So you'll, you'll probably see that next video. <laughs> so that is, that is my adventures in ice dyeing. Uh, there will be more. I will certainly show you more as I'm working on it. At some point, I think I'm going to start putting these in my Etsy shop too. Um, I know that hand dyed fabrics are, um, are pretty popular. Um, and a lot of people feel like it's really difficult and it's not difficult. Um, and I don't say that because I think you shouldn't buy people's handmade dyes, dyed fabrics. I think you should totally should. Um, but really the process itself is not difficult. You know, you put dye on fabric, um, getting it to look the way you want it to look, um, getting certain effects, uh, getting a really nice soft fabric, without fraying all of the, the edges and that sort of stuff. All of those things take craftsmanship, they take experience. Um, and that's the kind of thing that you're paying for when you buy hand dyed fabrics. Also you're supporting small businesses, so absolutely. But if you're a crafty person and you wanna save a little bit of money, you know, it's, it's not a difficult process. It is messy. It is messy as all get out. And I will say that. So really what you should probably do if you're trying to do stuff on the cheap, is you want to do this in the warmer months wherever you are uh, whatever those months are because you want to do it outside as much as possible um, because the dye the powder dye will get in the air if there's any kind of cir air circulation if you have a ceiling fan going anything like that the powder dye will get all over everything and the next time that thing gets moist you will have dye everywhere Trust me. So if you do work inside, make sure that you don't have any um, air circulation or as little circulation as possible. You want it to be a ventilated area, but you don't want any fans going or anything like that. Um, you want to cover every surface you care about. Uh, if you have a craft room, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a craft room and you don't have to worry about dye getting on things, then it's not such a big deal. If you're working in your kitchen, like I was, uh, you want to cover any surface that you care about. Um, and you do want to wear gloves when you're rinsing stuff out and when you're putting dye on things, even if it's powder dye, because that stuff will stain like you would not believe. Um, and if you can, you know, I'd suggest that you have a dedicated sink. Not everybody can. Um, certainly, I just use my kitchen sink, and a lot of people do. Um, definitely, if you have something that is not a stainless steel sink, be careful. Be careful, because that dye is going to get right in there. You need something that's stainless um, if you're going to do any kind of dyeing. So if you don't have those things, do it all outside. Um, you know, have a, a work table or something that you don't care about outside, even cardboard. You know, lay your stuff down on cardboard outside. Um, you can rinse things out in buckets with a hose outside, you know, which is why I suggest the summer months. And then you can hang them out to dry in the sun as well. So those are some handy dandy tips. Uh, a couple other things about dyeing. Um, if you're doing cross stitch fabrics, um, most, most cross stitch fabrics that you're working with are going to be cotton, 100% cotton. Um, if you're dyeing cotton, you probably want some fiber reactive dyes. And what that means um, is that the dye itself uh, creates a chemical reaction or has a chemical reaction with the cellulose in natural fibers like cotton. Um, and what that does is it, it in and of itself, just putting the, the dye on the fabric uh, creates that chemical reaction when you use things like soda ash and stuff like that so that you don't have to use a lot of heat and you don't have a lot of bleeding and stuff. It makes your colors more color fast. So uh, that's what I'll be moving towards the next time I do. I've gotten some, some fiber reactive dyes now. RIT is not a fiber reactive dye. Uh, RIT is not ever going to be completely color fast in your cotton fabrics um, because there's no way, well, I shouldn't say that. Um, if you are using a heated dyeing method, if you're using boiling water or you heat set something that you've ice dyed, um, then you can, you can probably get the colors to really set. But when you're ice dyeing, you, you really want a fiber reactive dye so that you don't have to worry about the heat treating and that kind of stuff and you get more color fast. 
dying results. So, okay guys, um, I think I have just about talked myself to death. This is a little shorter than last time, but like I said, I haven't worked on as much stuff this time. So um, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. If you have any SALs that you're working on, uh, definitely share those with me in the comments. I would love to know what you're working on um, or any cool nifty holiday projects coming up, whether it's, you know, for Thanksgiving or, or for Christmas or Hanukkah or any other holidays that you're celebrating in the next couple of months. Uh, definitely share those with me and I hope to see you next time. Have a great one.